why'd you stop playing ball against us? Because you guys were better than me at that point. That's why I stopped. Why be embarrassed? That's not. But yeah, you got to pass the proud, torch, though. Yeah, you supposed to lose. No, I wouldn't, to I wouldn't, I wouldn't pass in the torch. See, <laughs> you're not going to beat on my butt for me to tell uh, somebody, oh, my kids can whoop my butt. Yeah. Nah, nah, I just. But to be, no, to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, he had a bunch of uh, injuries, though, in the, the Achilles. You want to know what's wild, too? I never realized all the injuries you had until I blew my knee out. I didn't even understand the type of shit that he And he wasn't even getting paid. Like, he was doing this for the love. Welcome to season two of Iman Amongst Men, the show that takes an honest look at what it is to be a man in today's world. We don't shy away from topics most people are too afraid to talk about. We're going to take it all the way there. It's season two, y'all. Welcome to Iman Amongst Men, presented to you by Uninterrupted. I am Iman Shumpert, here with my big brother, Ari. Ari, go and give what's up to the people. What's going on, people? I'm excited, super excited to introduce our guest today. Yes, sir. Of course, he's another very special guest. Hey. A very, very special <laughs> guest. But we got in here today an uninterrupted legend, mm-hmm. an amazing father. Yes, sir. Grandfather. Yes, sir. And the makers of us here at Iman Amongst Men. <laughs> we got Otis Shumpert in here today. Let's go, Welcome. baby. Welcome. Yeah, thank you for that introduction. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I was working on it. <laughs> I was working on it. Uh, big O, as they call them. Um, the theme of today's show is family values. Pop, when you hear the phrase family values, what comes to mind? Honesty, Mm. joy, Mm. happiness, Mm -hmm. childhood, (laughs) and many more words beyond Mm. expressing. Mm. When I think of family values, um, a lot of times that is literally what I do is think back on how we came up. I don't I don't automatically go to uh to words but it's crazy to hear you say those words and then think about how we how we value things as mm-hmm. just being full boys um it's a lot of things that you go out in the world and you kind of want to do certain things I want to act a certain way and that it's like you you feel yourself correct the behavior and you think back on like, it's like you look at people and be like, damn, like I don't, it's the, what, what, who says, who raised you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Who raised you? But that's it's that. usually when you see somebody fucking up. Yeah, but it's but, like, but you, it's the the not being able to police yourself. Yeah. Um, the not having, uh, being able to rest your hat on saying like, I know my brother wouldn't lie to me. Or I know my mom, I don't know, I don't have to lie to my mom, I don't have to lie to my dad. You know what I'm saying? The honesty part of saying, you know, if, if, if something's going on, you gotta be able to say something. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Being able to hold each other accountable for stuff. Like, you might the, get judged. Oh yeah, you go get <laughs> you, judged. <laughs> you may get judged, like, just know that. But yeah, no, the honesty thing really, I don't know, it's like the whole, like I don't think of our household as like values, I just think of it like you just stated, mm-hmm. like man, would they do that? Or yeah. would they be ashamed of me if I did Straight something up. like that? Or how would they Straight feel? Up. You, you so you have those moments where it's like what like they would they would grill me at yeah. the dinner table. For me, for it's that. just a it's a mental like a mental safety net. Yeah, like I just think of how we come up, and then we think of man in correlation. Like, how does that relate to what I'm doing? Straight up, or how does that relate to like how I feel? Like, does it lead back to how I felt back then? And it's like, all right, if it does, what'd you do? Or what did somebody tell you? Usually, mm-hmm. it's what what it. What did you tell me? Exactly. Or what did I get in trouble for? And you had to correct, like straight up. But it's like you remember those moments, mm-hmm. and you lean on those moments. Like is sometimes it really is. Like maybe it was a whooping. Maybe it was uh, uh, you couldn't have your phone, or maybe it was uh, just plain y'all can't y'all can't hoop. But in the next two mm-hmm. days, y'all, y'all, no, nah, it ain't gonna be hooping all night and all that. Y'all gonna be done hooping by five. Y'all can come inside. Like those moments, it's like these are the things that really shaped us and mm-hmm. corrected us. Like we have, I literally think I stayed out of trouble half the time because I'm like, forget what the teacher is talking about. Forget what 
Uh, right. Yeah, everybody else is worried. What about. I'm gonna do when I get home? <laughs> exactly. How I'm gonna figure this out when <laughs> yeah. I get home? Yeah. And it's like if you fe- not not only fear it but respect it, that value that comes on because it's like even for mom, it's like well, though we got bigger and we weren't tripping off mom's whoopings anymore. It was like you didn't want to disappoint. Yeah. The whole, the whole idea was for us to set examples. Mm. We wanted you to grow up and be good people. Not nice people, but good people. Mm. And if we set a good example for you that took care of itself, you remember those things for the rest of your life. Mm. I remember I used to always tell you, I can't wait till you guys have kids. Oh, bro. (laughs) (laughs) What is life going to be like when you have kids? Are you going to let them do the same things that you did when you were growing up? Mm. Are you going to set an example for them? because they're gonna remember that for the rest of their lives. You guys remember, now you come back and you say, dad, (laughs) four Mm. boys, how did we do it? Yeah. I I, I swear, I'm still confused. (laughs) We're still confused. And it's the biggest, the biggest thing to figure out is seeing our daughters play and need so much attention for stuff like need a, a iPad, need this, need that. Like going A to B in a car with four of us right. without iPads, I'm trying to envision it and I can't. Fuck that with no digital technology. <laughs> Nothing like, at all. That's what at I'm best, we had a CD player or a, a <laughs> tape player somewhere at best. Or the tape player with the aux cord. Right. Yeah. And, that, and that was good. Like yeah, that was you living fire. good. Yeah, yeah. That's fire. <laughs> but. <laughs> But that was your safety net. Yeah. That's what you had because technology hadn't developed at that point in time. You we didn't have the internet. So what you Right. So what what was you doing for us? Yeah. What was how was you keeping us from tearing everything up? Keeping your not only your mind but your body occupied doing other activities. Sports. We had you had sports, you had uh, activities at school. You had the library, you had the field, you had the backyard, yeah. which there's many, <laughs> many stories about. Oh, we're going to get to that. Yeah, we're going to yeah, get to that. So, so you, we tried to keep you occupied when you were growing up. Yeah. And, and, I, that, and that was the, uh, the basis of life. Not only occupying your mind, but your spirit and your body. Yeah, he always had us in church. Straight up. Always. Yeah, but I didn't. Not, I was getting ready to say I didn't force it, but yeah, I did force it. Yeah, you did force it. Yeah, you, <laughs> had, you had no choice. I'm glad you, get up man. <laughs> you, had, I'm glad. you had no choice until you became adults, mm-hmm. and then you were on your own. Yeah, I couldn't make the decision for you. You had to make your own decision because you were your own person at that time. Yeah. No, I'd say I'd say you gave us that grace by high by high school, like second year of high school. It was like. Well, really, you start missing. <laughs> Dude start missing, missing the mass. And if he missed 8 o'clock, he was not going to do 10.30. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't going to do 10.30. Oh, Every once in a while, I would do 10.30. Like, I was cool with the 10.30 because uh, most of the time, like, Auntie Carolyn would uh, sing and stuff during the 10.30, like, oh, yeah, no, Pop that, would take over, he would take over during Those were usually sometimes. special events, though, like, we had time to prepare for those. Like, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, but I'm saying I liked going to the 10.30 because, like, I saw, I seen usually when the first mass would go, like, Pop would have to do hella stuff, like, oh, yeah. uh, Uncle Greg would have to do, Sometimes like, we tell, did like, it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or, like or you would have to read, like it'll just sit up there and it'll be quiet and he'll have to come up there and start read. reading and yeah. I'll be like, bro, what is going on? <laughs> like, what's going on? And I'm like, I didn't even know he was involved today. Like, dude, it's part of the church. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, right, 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 yeah, right. Yeah, I'm like, what's going on? You on the podium, dude? You yeah. a preacher? Like, It wasn't a matter of being a preacher, but it was, uh, it was a matter of, that's the way we were raised by our mother. And we go, you go back and you talk about church. I remember uh, my mom was Baptist. I remember when we were little kids. Oh, I didn't know that. I yeah, she she was she was that. Baptist, and we went to church with her once, and they were singing, and and people were shouting and screaming and fainting, and we told our mom, 
I don't want to go back to that. <laughs> that was it. And she didn't take us back. That's when we became Catholic. What? That's when we became Catholic because we were like, you know, they putting on the show, but actually that that's the way they felt in their hearts. Mm. You know, I guess they, some of them would say they had the Holy Spirit yeah, and the Holy, the Holy Ghost. Ghost. The Holy Ghost, we didn't want any parts of it. <laughs> Yeah, no. we, that that wasn't for us, but, you know. <laughs> let's go to church. Uh, say oh, what we got to do. Bless me, Father. I have sinned. Ba 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 ba. Time to go home. Yeah. Mass over. So we went stand two, three, four hours. That just wasn't. So there's wasn't your answer. Influence. That's so why talk. when I got older, so I we recognized they didn't really want to go. We became Catholic. So mm -hmm. that we could get that hour and get in and out. Yep, this is a person. Eight o'clock mass. I thought this whole time everybody <laughs> was just coming up Catholic. Catholic. Yeah, I thought this was like a generational thing. And you never told know. us that. As far mm -hmm. as we remember, like our grandmother has been involved in the Catholic Church. All her life. Well, I mean, she's much all older than you. That's true. Much older but than you. Saying, that's she all, never, yeah. She, she never, never did mention started her. with the, with like, yeah, why? started Baptist. Said, why? <laughs> why? Because shame. Not, not her, but my father came from a family of ministers. See, You're getting new <laughs> stuff. Here. This family of information. ministers, and when Greg became a deacon, my father's sisters flew here to hear his first sermon. So y'all just wasn't gonna tell us none of this. <laughs> I mean, it never came up, no, but no, still. They, but still, yeah, I just feel like you. We should know that. Like y'all don't know y'all. Y'all come from a long line of ministers. Yep. They like that's that's ministers. a good line, Pop. Mm -hmm. Y'all should have just threw that out there. Yeah. That's one night. Don't y'all know y'all come from a long line of ministers? Yeah, my mother would say uh, when my dad had a couple brothers that they could sing. Oh, they could, they could sing like anybody you can imagine. Right. Uh, didn't make any difference to us. Uh, who uh -huh. cares? Everybody can sing. Right. Can they? No, he's just saying. Oh, anybody could go up there and do yeah, that. Yeah, but there. apparently my father's side of the family. They could sing. They could sing. Now my mother's side of the family, they couldn't. <laughs> they, could, they couldn't hold a note. That wasn't trash. <laughs> nope, didn't, didn't, tr didn't try because it was all sisters and one brother. So a little bit more about our granddad and this long line of pre preachers he comes from. <laughs> what does, like, what do you know about that? Like, how far do you know back that they practice that? We only only go back as far as what my mother would tell us, because uh, okay. they were born and raised in the South mm -hmm. yeah. in uh, Tupelo, Mississippi. Mm. The only time I went to Tupelo, Mississippi, was for a funeral. Right, but you did that a lot. No, no, after. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do it a lot. I remember when my grandfather passed away, uh, uncle passed away, a couple other relatives, that was it. I didn't go that often. So the numbers probably had like 12. Yeah, I doubt if I went there 12 times. I don't know that much about oh, okay. the South because when my mom turned 21 and moved to Chicago, she never went back. She only went back for a wedding or for funerals. She always that said was that. it. She always she said, said that. that she didn't want to live. She wanted no more, no parts of the South anymore, which I can I can understand. Did she ever like break down exactly why? Was it like one moment or like a? No, know, I like, guess it was just her her experience growing up as a teenager. She's playing sports. She had no no issues with it, but I guess the other racial things that went on there. Mm. Uh, nothing happened to her, right? No, Except nothing, her. nothing, uh, nothing happened to her. You know, we were told that uh, our relatives uh, owned, they did still own it, but owned a lot of property. But then, too, had general stores. Mm -hmm. Even during the uh, Great Depression, Damn. so they come from a well-stocked family. But we didn't know that much about them. That's crazy. We didn't see our grandmother and grandfather on my father's side that often. On my mother's side, we saw them often. Copy. And with grandmother, she don't talk about it. Like, she don't be wanting mm -hmm. to talk about it. Like, every time I've tried to go down the rabbit hole, she'd be like, nope, and ain't going back. 
<laughs> nope, and she'll, she'll be the first to tell you. She'll be like, yep, left, they ain't going back. And uh, property that they have there, mm -hmm. she said, you know, give it to those who still reside there. I want no parts of it. And we felt that way too because my father's father had a lot of property. And I thought about it and said, you know what? We need to go down in Mississippi and let's divide this up. And I was thinking to myself, why do I want any of that property? I never lived there. What do you mean? You... I, never, I never even wanted to go there to visit. Oh, you just didn't want to go? I just, I just didn't want to. I had no interest in it. Crazy. But you still have, uh, I still have cousins that still live there. It should belong to them. Right. It's, it, it's, it's theirs. Now, if they decide to sell it or cultivate it for something and say, hey, we want to give you, I might consider it, but it really belongs to them. Yeah, well, I don't know why he don't want it, but yeah, y'all <laughs> consider that shit and get it to him, get it to him. We gonna take good care of that. We gonna go to right. Mississippi. I don't mind Mississippi. I've been telling grandmother that for the longest. I'm like, yo, I love the South. She was like, I know. That's why I don't want you going. <laughs> well, I was like, I love going. She was like, you really love it down there in Georgia. I'm like, it's cool, granny. It's like, y'all got this sun. I'm like, it's all this field out here. I'm like, it's room. I'm like, we on top of each other all the time in Chicago. I'm like, I'm so used mm. to the neighbors being right here. Here. Well, I've never seen neighbors that far unless it's a really, really nice house. So I'm like, to, to see just a house that looked like ours, but they got two acres around it. I'm mm -hmm. like, that's cool to me. I'm like, these Fine. places, yeah, these places in the South, I'm like, they got uh, a big family house and it'd be like 20 people staying in that and then they got the big old field, they playing all these guys. I'm like, bro, I wouldn't mind that. I'm like, I don't know what it's like now. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never lived down there. I know she's got her reasons, but I used to ask her to try and get her to go down the rabbit hole. She'd be like, nope. nope. She used to a different South. Oh, bro. Yeah, when, and when, once she left, she never did want to go back. That's great. Now my father went back and lived. How do you uh, create shared values when you get married as far as uh, coming into something, knowing your values, your principle, and then having our mother's values and principles? How do you guys find that merged voice to you know, give yeah. things to your kids? Both sides are opposites. I mean, both sides are opposite, but your mother and me, we got along great. We had different values for ourselves and then for our children. The values that we had were, we wanted to maintain a household. Because mm. you read all of these things about, well, you know, we got a one parent household and his father's not around and he's all over the place and you never see him. No, we wanted to always have a two parent household. When mom was at work, when she was teaching late uh, late evening classes, I would be at home with you guys, making sure you got your homework, making sure at dinner time we discuss what went on during mm -hmm. the day, and that was every day. That's what you fear. That's that's the time you need to hide, <laughs> or you need to come up with your story. You need to have some. You got to have something at dinner. No, that's a. Uh, I used to like that. At the end of the day, like it's tough to do that now. Like Very the tough schedule to and just um, phones, phones. Yes, yeah. yeah. but you guys have to remember, uh, it's a different era right mm -hmm. now. Raising children as opposed to when you guys were coming up, we had activities for you to do. Yeah. Children now want to be glued to their phones. They want to be glued to the internet, Instagram, Twitter because this is what's available to them. Right. Had you guys had those things available to you at the time, I don't know what might have happened. We don't know how you might have turned out, yeah. but you have to look at it. Uh, children now have instruments available to them at a very young age. Yeah. I mean, very. we're talking second and third grade. They want their own phone and they can operate it. Real time. Where you guys didn't get your own phone High school. To high school. And uh, I don't know uh, if you remember if you did something wrong or if mom and I called you, you didn't respond. We didn't take them. We just 
Oh, Shut the service off. off. Yeah, turn it off. Just turn the service off. You keep the phone. <laughs> what good was it? Turn the service off. Yeah. And the next time you would respond. Yeah, I remember the voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the voicemail. What's it uh what's it like? What are the challenges of raising four boys? Difficult. <laughs> I mean, very difficult. Be specific. Like it would, matter of fact, be real specific. Who was the most difficult and why? You were you were probably the most difficult, Ari. Because you had your own <laughs> Self-motivation. Wow. If we said something, you had an answer for it. Oh, bro. that's true. That's <laughs> true. You always wow. outspoken. Yeah. Your mind would be a little more diplomatic. <laughs> Kasani, who was the youngest one, and Otis, who was the oldest one, they would both sit back and let you two take charge because they were followers. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. They, 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 they were the two followers. That's I why never, I, that's, I, I never noticed what, like I always, like as Kasani, I felt like he naturally did it. Like I would naturally follow suit with Ari, Kasani would naturally follow suit, suit with me. me. But Paco was very like, I think cause he was the, the biggest age gap, he just never was around enough for me to even see like, how he even viewed us. Like, I feel like at one point, Parker was just he gone. Was, he was the relaxed guy. But I'm saying, cause he was like, when I start entering high school, high school. he's done. He was mm -hmm. done already. He's what, a couple, a year removed from college, he had moved out. He moved out a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> what was then that? moved back came in a back. couple of yeah, times. Came back, yeah, it, it, reason, and you say that too, because when you were playing AAU, yeah. Basketball. We would go on road trips, Indy, Indiana, Pittsburgh. Thing. Come back, we find out he's had a party and had friends over there. I don't even remember that. He's yeah, had, he's had, still at school, I remember. I don't, I don't think remember. Ari would, would be with us, but. No, I yeah. did that. Well, it was, it's one particular time. I'm not gonna <laughs> name the time, but it's one particular time where I did go with you. We went to Atlantic City. And when we came back, the whole crib, like there was some there was some alcohol involved. Like I don't know what it yeah. was or whatever. Like I wasn't a drinker back then either. So I was just like Good uh, pinpoint it. Yeah, yeah. And plus I didn't see it as such a big deal either. Wait a minute, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Parties? Yeah. It was, I don't think it was a party. Maybe they had just like had a little a few, get together. Few friends yeah. over. The but he was tripping though, like he <laughs> couldn't have friends. Like it was weird to me because it was like, man, he like twenty six. Like just say you had some friends over. It was weird. He was just like trying to work around. I'm like, <laughs> it's wild. It'd be funny. I think, uh, I think uh, when I think about getting in trouble, I wait. I used to weigh out how each, how everybody else got in trouble. I'm like, Ari <laughs> tries this stance of like this, like he may just let his reaction get the best of him. Somebody may say something, he may just jump on top of their statement with his statement and it's like, nah, that's like a problem. I'm like, I'm definitely not doing that. I don't want that ass with him. <laughs> I'm cool on that. Paco would do like this thing where he would like, I don't know, like give a weird answer or like just a throw out there answer or just like, okay, I'll say whatever you want me to say type of vibe uh, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. walk away, take whatever punishment, just walk away. <laughs> and I was him. like, I don't like that. I don't like that version. Kasani used to be like in denial or would tell you <laughs> he'll put whatever problem he got, just put it behind his back. Like, I don't know what you, I don't know what you talking about. So I was like, yeah, I can't do that. But I always, <laughs> I always enter problems thinking about how everybody did it. Like, okay, what was, what's the best way to do this? Like, I remember having to tell you stuff and just being like, damn, gee, I just, I'm gonna just tell him, man. I, don't, <laughs> I right. feel like, yeah, the lion, I feel like that's gonna get my ass <laughs> whooped. I feel like I can't outthink him in like trying yeah. to put the story together that I'm trying to put together. Like, and then it would be stuff where you'll be like, don't look at me. I'm not, <laughs> like, I'm not helping you. I got mine already <laughs> earlier this week. Right, I don't right, want no right. parts. Like, yeah, no. I was just in trouble. I can't help you. I don't wanna help you think of a lie. I don't wanna do it. And then after uh, after a while, when we got to high school, I was like, you know what? 
I don't really have no reasons to be lying. Like I stopped it. Right. I was like, I don't care if we bring girls in the house. I'll tell the mom, like, mom, this is a girl. You know, where should we stay? With somewhere you can see us or what? <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you, but it was like the lying. I, it's crazy that you kicked it off saying honesty because that was like I felt like that's when we grew, when we were grown when we could finally just have an open conversation. Oh with yeah, you, yeah, and we didn't feel like. Like when I didn't feel nervous to play basketball and curse or belittle somebody or really go at somebody in front of you, it was like this is part of the the like becoming a man. Like the growing process. Da- yeah, it's like no, nah, my dad knows how I talk. He know how I move. If somebody hit me, I could I could fight him in front of him and tell him like no, nah, they crossed the line with me. I wasn't just acting out or just being terrible. You know what I'm saying? So. Having those principles is crazy when you think about it, because it's like I, I I can't. Sometimes I say I'll be like basketball raise us or did this or woo woo, and then I'll think about it. I'm like, bro, we used to have to do check ins. I'm like, one of the only numbers that I know by heart is his number. Oh yeah, we yeah. used to have to call your phone and check in. Like I remember being like, why why I was able to go so far, and you would just tell me whatever hoop you going to or wherever you're going, just call. call. Oh, yeah, as long as you call me and let me know what where you're at, like you good. Like y'all just over there hooping, cool. But I remember actually being at people's house and doing it. Like, I had he gave me a. Uh, it was after what? Because you've had that six oh two the whole time. Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh, you, he had cell? that. Yeah. Once we all got that cell, remember we all got cell phones. Yeah, that's when he changed that? it. He had a yeah. He had like three different ones before that. But he gave me his. Uh, oh, you was a real player. Yeah. He that's when he had the old cell phone. Like he had the Big one with the suitcase. Bag. No, the one with the suitcase. <laughs> what? That sh- it was like the first one ever invented. When was it, this? It was. It was a minute ago. You might not remember, but I remember it like that's back in the eighties. But oh, yeah, I wasn't 80s. here yet. I wasn't here No, yet. no, no. I don't remember it from the eighties. I just remember him taking it out and like he'd use it every now and then. Oh, like, oh, copy, copy, copy. But you saying that you had it since the eighties? Yeah, yeah. But that that he he gave me an insurance card, and it had all three numbers on them. And I remember I put uh, our house number and mom's number on there, and that's I used to. I used to use collect because I didn't have money to make the uh, call. Yeah. So you do the collect thing and then you just say, say your name. Real, three seconds. <laughs> say where you at real quick, real like tough. really quick. Yeah, it's like four or five seconds. Yeah, you just say where you at real it's quick. It's sorry, right, I'm off at Ridgeland. Like, yep, wow. It's sorry, right, I just got off at Ridgeland. Wow, that was, oh, the, that was the text back in 1999. Oh bro, three, so, second, three second voicemails. That's yeah. crazy. And I don't even remember people's numbers now. Just when, sign, of the, sign of the times. Yeah. When we talk uh, sports and it helping, uh, what do you think are some of the qualities that sports instilled in your kids? Discipline. Mm. We were just talking about this. Courage. That's a Motivation. Good yeah, that's a good one. Why you say courage? It helped to bring out the best in you. You weren't afraid to try. Mm. You wouldn't, I wouldn't say wasn't afraid to try, but wasn't afraid to fail. Mm-hmm. You get back up and, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this again. That's real. Straight up, I never really thought of sports for courage. I No, I did way back when, like when we would have plays or like little performances at school, or if, we, if I knew there was gonna be a lot of people there, I would always think back to like games. I think I'm a little, a, a bit of a space cadet. I never really cared for crowds. But you, you know, you're, that's your personality. You like that. But I'm saying even when I was younger, I don't think like when we did the recorder thing. Cause that's your personality. You I'm like, like that. bro, I never cared who was sitting out there. I used to just be trying to look like, see where dad and mom was sitting. Like yeah, once I knew where they was sitting, I was like, oh, but you right never, like, that's the my thing, parents though, right you, there. You never cared about like people looking at you doing something that you normally do. You yeah. don't care. I don't know why, but it's not weird to me, but at the same time, it's just like, it will make you think. If you're thinking about it, it will make you be like, oh, like shit, people are watching. But I wonder if us doing like little stuff for like uh, mm-hmm. at Whittier, where you gotta do the chorus stuff, you gotta do, I wonder if that stuff helped me for basketball, cause I never for gave sure. a fuck about people sitting in front of me. Yeah, like, for I sure. Like, yeah, but uh, you, you, you were interested in achieving. You and Kasani, I will never forget, we're in a, uh, uh, not a play, but uh, an audition to do 
Michael Jackson. Oh no, talent, show. talent show. Talent show. Talent show. I remember that. And uh, you guys did it so well. You were able to moonwalk across the stage. Oh, you really? guys did all of that. And then Kasani, you remember Kasani's hat? Uh, he threw his hat too far. Yeah, I, I remember it. I we was threw, there. I would just give y'all this moment, man. <laughs> I'm going to find the video if I can find it, dog. We got this whole routine, and we're in the middle of doing the like little side slide that Mike do. <laughs> And we supposed to side slide, and then we supposed to get ready to put our hat back on. But we had the, the you know, it was back then, you had to do it by yourself with the audio. You couldn't like mix it like a DJ, cause we was too young. So we had somebody do the tape, and they would like, the tape would jump back to the doo, 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 Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Doo. It'd go back to the Billy Jean shit. So Kasani knew he wasn't gonna make it. So he abandoned the choreo and did six spins to go pick up his hat. I just hit a crowd going crazy and I'm looking like, while I'm doing the move, I'm like, bro, this is a basic <laughs> side step. Like, what is this? We go back afterwards and look, look at the, the tape. Solo. Man, the man did a whole solo six spins, <laughs> picked it up, did that, went backwards, going back into it and formed it back. I'm like, boy, you real. And tossed the hat at the man, end. Man, tossed the hat. <laughs> it tossed the hat. Man, I'm looking like, dog, just shut it down, and I didn't even see it. And I was guys, doing the choreo. You guys did shut it down. Oh, no, you it went won crazy. The, you won the talent show. Yeah, it was you crazy. shut it down. But now that I think about it, now that I think about it, I'm like, bro, maybe that helped my, my playing basketball stuff. Because I, it was like people used to, like crowds were blurs for the longest until I got to the league. When I got to the league, I was like, Wow. No, uh, no, we have to go back when you were doing uh, in high school, what was the uh, speech? Uh, spoken, uh, spoken word. Spoken word. Spoken word, I did a lot of stuff. Yeah, you did a lot of stuff with spoken word. You did so much that your varsity basketball team mm -hmm. would finish practice early to come so in what? to hear spoken word. Man, that's crazy. I mean, I even enjoyed speaking spoken word because I initially thought it was all rap and I wasn't into the rap yeah. scene yeah. No, but this is poetry I enjoyed what I was hearing yeah. and uh, the other people in the auditorium enjoyed it as well it was, it so was it was crazy. a character builder mm -hmm. for you guys so it was things that you thought that you didn't have these are some of the elements that help bring out your character yeah I, I say that's why I like I remember, do you remember uh, when Kasani was playing either soccer or baseball? Ari was playing football, football. and wrestling. I was playing play basketball. Wrestling. We would wake up, we'd wake up, I'd, we'd go to like Kasani's soccer game. Kasani would have like an early game. I'd be getting ready for my game. You'd be leaving from somebody's halftime to try and make it to this and mm -hmm. do this to try and figure out how to make it to all the games. And then as I got older, I started doing that the same way I would do it for Ari. Like, oh no, Ari's gonna be playing. So I know I gotta make this game. And then Kasani's gonna be doing, so I Something. gotta make it over here to this. But as I get older, even with my actual friends, that's what I do. Like, it's you don't realize you providing that habit, but it's like, if you told me, uh, Oh yeah, man. I ain't, you know it's something like, man. I'm doing. We doing a little red carpet, little event. If you could come, come. Like, but if it's you, it's like, nah. I'm gonna be there, like, mm -hmm. cause I'm so used to dude being there. Like, our father, you would think that dude wasn't coming, man. Dude to be standing under the rim, arms <laughs> folded, <laughs> work outfit <laughs> right, on, briefcase saying, sitting there, the whatever. Slacks. Yep, yep. Walk right in and Clark wait for Kent. the timeout before he sit down in his seat. Wait for the timeout. You see what you got going on for a second by the door. All right, then they gonna go sit down. You, you, him and grandmother would always sit in the middle. They were like sitting in the uh, middle. Right, but right. on the away team, whole like special <laughs> I don't know what, section. I don't know what they was on. They used to like sitting on the away side. You know why we so you went no, the couch. So you went no. the coach. <laughs> and Iman told me once. I, I remember a play was going on, mm -hmm. and coach called uh, the play. <laughs> coach Allen. And then you got a two on one fast break going right there at half oh, yeah. court. And coach would time out, time out, time out. <laughs> I'm man, like, and I'm show. like, coach, are we watching the same play? And Iman say, Dad, I, we could we could hear you in our in our <laughs> huddle. So instead of me continuing to sit behind the home team bench, mm. we moved to the opponents 
that <laughs> and stands and then watch the game. And got into it with they fans. <laughs> so he leaving that part out when they right. get into it's it. It's disrespectful on both sides. Like you, you doing this to the coach of your team, then to the other team, you like you this because it's, it's like I'm still cheering for them on your side. What's even sicker is Coach Al end up liking it. Like he ended up starting to be that. Like you know your dad's gonna be sitting there. Like he knew how. <laughs> like for real though. Like it became a thing. Like that's what's it's it's cool to to, to look back on. It. I never understood uh, why grandmother got so comfortable in it though. Like. <laughs> Cause gra- it, grandmother like made it her business too. Like she would be there sometimes, and dad wouldn't be there right away. Like oh, yeah, she yeah, would, yeah. she would, or or now you would be parking, you'd be parking or something. But grandmother would go sit in her seat by herself. Yeah, and be like, she yeah, had like, like yeah, like no, nah, y'all knew <laughs> exactly. <laughs> y'all what knew is. exactly where I was finna sit. Like I was sitting nowhere else. And she about this big. Like it's not. <laughs> if we could get our grandmother on the show, man. We can Listen, get her on a plane. <laughs> yeah, that'd be the difficult one. To anywhere. One. Get, on, get a plane. on a plane to anywhere. I get an RV all the way out here. I done did it before my dad. So. Uh, train. Man, oh, yeah, we could kids, put her on the train. Kids, yeah, come on, Grandma. Get on the train. <laughs> uh, talk about uh, how you grew up and how you feel like that shaped you as a man. Well, growing up, we grew up, like I said, one-parent household. Mm. And... You know, the word was already in society, you know, families, especially black families, needed a mother and a father. We weren't that fortunate. We had a father, <laughs> but he was never there. My father never saw us play a sport. Dang. Never. He came to a banquet once when I played seventh grade football and see me get a trophy. That was it. Was it that, that he didn't care or he just? Well, he was never athletic. He well, was he never, didn't he, the, he, he didn't see the importance in it. What he wanted me to do was walk around and you know go to the army and put uh, logs on my shoulder. That's the way he was brought up. Blue collar. Wait, what yeah. you mean put logs on your Just like hard work. Hard, hard, hard man work. Hard labor. Labor. Hands. labor. Yeah. Work with the hands. Look look at your hands. And I always said to myself, and I used to t- tell him, I want my hands to be smooth. I want I want to work with a pencil and a pen. Not with a chainsaw. It's crazy. And you know, he he didn't really respect that. He he wanted he wanted me to go to the uh go to the mm-hmm. army. And I said to myself, I said, if I ever got married and had children, I'm gonna always be there for them. And as I look back on it, I I cherish those moments that he didn't give me because I'm able to cherish those moments that I gave to my four sons. Mm -hmm. And that, that, uh, that, that, that was important. To, uh, to be able to have that amongst your four boys. And I and now that I look at it, you guys do the same thing with you. You cherish the moments that you have with your children. For sure. You don't you don't abandon them. Can't. Well, no, now you can't. now you now you can't because they're they're always at uh, at your leg, at your at your shoe, dra- wanting you to drag them along. And that's one of the important things in uh Becoming a becoming a man in society. When did you say? Uh, when was your first job? Oh, my first job was helping my mother. I was a paper boy in grammar school. Damn. Be out there in gym shoes in the snow, and uh, I remember walking. Uh, I would walk over to the uh, train station, and as the uh, people got off their jobs, the businessmen. It was the Daily News, the Sun Times, the Tribune. They'd be walking to get their commuter mm-hmm. train going home. We fold the paper, put it up under their uh, their arm, uh, arm, and they give us a quarter for each paper. You wouldn't even say it. nothing to them. Just no, toss just it under just arm. toss it under the arm. They knew what to do. That was the routine. That's how. That's what we were taught. It's like a drug transaction. <laughs> 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 and then from there, uh, I. Uh, Used to work with another one of my mother's cousins. 
the the uh, cousin and her husband back in the 60s, yeah. like 68 to 70, they were the first two black people that I ever knew that owned their own business. She was a beautician. He used to do uh, salmonize and clean used cars for dealerships. They worked for themselves. I'm probably 14, 15 years old at the time, still helping my mom out. But it gave me discipline. Did you ever feel robbed of like childhood? No, no, never felt robbed. Uh, I enjoyed a great childhood. Uh, a lot of the people I grew up with, you know, most of them are gone now. Mm. Drinking, drugs, being killed, things like that. But don't, uh, don't, don't regret it. For years, I never did want to go back, but I said simply because I'm much better than this now. I'm better than they are now. I was no better. I was just smarter. Mm-hmm. It was. I was still the same person. Mm-hmm. They were still the same person. And then after maybe, I think maybe 30 years, I went back and I saw a few of them just to see what they were doing. Doing the same stuff. Doing the same th- same thing, and they used to all. They would tell me. They said, "You know, your mom wanted the best for you guys. We weren't that fortunate." It wasn't a matter that they weren't that fortunate. It was a matter that they didn't apply themselves. Yeah. We had the best uh, trainer. I had drum lessons, karate lessons. Oh, you I know, know karate. You karate. I took karate. My mom, she. Let us do, you know, if we wanted it, she tried it. So you like a black belt? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> what age is this? This is probably 14, 15 years old. Yeah, I was gonna say, I done seen you get into it with a couple of people. I ain't never seen you drop in no stairs. <laughs> right, like <this>. right. <laughs> Give them the. <laughs> yeah, he ain't never gave nobody that move you know, right there. I would, I would argue with, with a few people, get upset, but then I thought about it. What does this accomplish? I lose my temper. What does it accomplish? You know, you uh, definitely could, could, could. You try to yeah. talk your way out of it, and then I think about with today's society. And I had a temper then, and I didn't talk my way out of it. Probably would have tried to find a way to uh, hurt someone. Oh, bro! Land and yourself I, right I, locked up. And that's why uh, I've always said. Uh, some people say, you know, hey, you should get a gun, get you a concealed a carry card. Yeah. If I get a gun, use it. Why, yeah, I'm gonna use it. <laughs> why, why have it sitting around? Yeah, collecting dust. dust. I'm, I'm going to use it. So that's why I said uh, never was interested in a gun. I remember going to a uh, with Andrew. Uncle Andy, a little had his nine. With he, him. he used to have his guns, and I would uh, we would go to the shooting range. Yeah, I shot a couple of times. I didn't. I didn't like it. He loved it. it. He loved it, but mm-hmm. I I didn't like it at all. I didn't like the noise, you know, holding the gun, the kit back. And Andrew sorts. is my uncle Andy, man. Rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, good. Fr- he was a good friend. He was a good friend, like a brother. We were like brothers to each other. My dog, yeah, man. He used to one of my favorite memory of Uncle Andy is like he used to play video games with us. Yeah, and we all played with the controller how we feel like it was meant to be played. Like, this is how the controller should be held and played. They put the shit there for your thumbs. Oh, he was the first person you saw. Okay, go ahead, keep going. He would play like this and work it like this. (laughs) (laughs) And he'd be talking shit to you. He got a cigar hanging. Yeah, 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 I'm looking at him, getting his ass. I'm like, whoa, whoa. Whoa, yeah, give me the money. Give yeah. me the money, but he'd be talking to you, lighting up, and so, looking yeah. around, having fun. Telling the story. Tell us all type of stories, but he'd be playing like this. <laughs> <laughs> my, 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 I'll just keep remembering, I just, I could smell the- Mind you too, he old, like I he could not- smell that age. cigar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll be talking trash to you, and then for some reason, it was like playing uh, NBA Jam would make him tell stories about when he was playing. Oh yeah. And then he would tell hypotheticals about what he'd do to you 
if y'all was playing what I'm like, bro, we are playing a video game. It was, yo, it, that used to, we used to love. Oh, bro. We I used would to love drive. coming home in my, well, he, like my, an hour, my he was clothes, like an hour away from us. My clothes used right to smell like his cigar. Yeah, about, about an hour away when he moved so, out to the suburbs. Yeah, when yeah. he moved and he had the big crib, he had this big, like it, it wasn't even really nice, but it was just this big crazy chair. Yeah, and it was a gamer chair. It wasn't really a gamer chair, but it it <laughs> it kind of was. But it was like it would swing around, and he would play like that and sit any way he wanted. It and was he was crazy. he was kind of tall too, wasn't he? Like six six? No, oh, Andrew was six, six three, two. six oh, six, three, six, three. six four. So he wasn't that tall, but he was tall to me back then. Uh, yeah, but I don't he, know about uh, six four, Paul. He might no, be he was six good, two, six three. No, he was about six four. Yeah, because Ronnie was six six, his, his older brother. I won't say. It. I, let me be the judge of everything at the six one for y'all, man. All right? <laughs> Let me be the judge of height after that. You know what I'm saying? I'll, you can if you want. I'm, I'm just saying I wasn't that tall. Was back Granddad, then, so I was granddad tall? Which one? Oh, well, I know Ours. mom's granddad. Our, our granddad yeah. on our mom's side was tall, right? He was about six two, six three. My father was about six two. Six two. Mm-hmm. Wow. We still don't know where you do. <laughs> and a lot of people say, where, where the hell did he get the <laughs> height from? I'm like, I was trying to figure it out. I was like, when they told me six, they said Douglas was six, two, six, three. And they was like, that's where you and Nick got it. So I was like, maybe that makes sense. I don't know. But if both Possibly. our, if both our granddads when? was about six, three, that's, that's good enough. I don't think it's so that, much granddad though. Cause Nick's dad was big. Like he was tall too. Yeah, tall, tall and wide. You and mom never thought of that when you thought about sports. <laughs> like, you know what? We not tall enough. We not gonna get no, no athlete out of out of our heights. Y'all didn't think like yeah, that. Yeah, but we had athletes. Sorry, football. Oh, no. We always athletes. Uh, you under six feet. Uh, you was a Chris Paul type. Yeah, <laughs> dribbler basketball wasn't a shooter, but you would pass it off. Mm -hmm. To Evan Turner and Lamont Saunders, mm -hmm. uh, even when you were freshman in high school, your jersey was hanging off for you. Yeah, and it, that's what that's what I'm saying. It was weird. It was yeah, like I was then, little. I w I had one game, and I kept playing like that. And I woke up, and I was tall as hell. And then I couldn't run fast. You remember I was like a, a deer in it. I'm no headlights. Falling. Yeah, I'm just falling and running all over the place. And then I, you remember you went to work. You, you had came from work and I was begging you to come. This is back when I finally got my coordination. Remember we spent all that time with Greg that summer? And then I got all my Freshman coordination year. back. We played York. No, no, this was, uh, this was junior year. No, sophomore year. This was sophomore, sophomore yeah, going yeah, into yeah. sophomore year. After your freshman year, right. And I start getting my coordination back and Ari came to the game. By the time he walked in, remember the uh the they they had a big man with red hair. I can't think of his name, but I went up to to try and punch it on him. I went up and they fouled me. I ended up not losing the ball, but everybody was asking me why I was yelling. But I was yelling at him when he walked in. I was like, I told you to come to the game. I told you I'm a duck. I told you. I was so hyped, boy. I was like, yeah, I'm tall but now. You didn't even complete the duck. I didn't complete the duck at all, but I was hyped. You see what I'm saying? And I knew I was taller than him. Uh, why'd, you, uh, why'd you stop playing ball against us? Cause you guys were better than me at that point. That's why I stopped. Why be embarrassed? That's not. But yeah, you got to pass the proud, torch, though. Yeah, you supposed to lose. No, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't <laughs> passing the torch. See, you're not gonna beat on my butt for me to tell uh, somebody. Oh, my kids can whoop my butt yeah. now. Nah, I just. But to be no, to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, he had a bunch of uh, injuries though, and the uh, the Achilles. You wanna know what's wild too? I never realized all the injuries you had until I blew my knee out. I didn't even understand <laughs> See, yeah. the type of shit that he And dealt he wasn't with. even getting paid. Like he, <laughs> he was doing this for the love. For the and, love of the game, putting oh, the deep yeah. brace on. No, I remember the the, the, Achilles. the Achilles. Yeah. I remember I, when it happened, because I was we were You guys were there. We were you were right looking there, at it. And I watched I it. I can't remember what happened. I just remember he was, I do no, remember you like you were, limping around uh, the house for a little bit. We, he was playing around. Remember, we were actually keeping score. So we had to watch. Like remember was when they were it was retreads. And he was I remember the night and everything. And he was running and he looked back. And I remember he grabbed his leg and he just went down immediately. He didn't keep trying to run. He looked back like somebody pushed and then, him. Or somebody so I was looking him. just like that's weird. Like I've never seen that. And then I was like, Well, he's not grabbing his chest or nothing, so he should be all right. And I was just thinking like maybe he turned his ankle or something. Like about to cramp. write it off. Yeah. yeah, I'm about to write it off. I see everybody get up. 
That's oh, what got me. They all knew. They knew and they cool. knew it was like, it was serious. Like it was something really wrong. And everybody got up and walked over. And that's when I was like, oh, oh like something's wrong. Yeah, and I kind of got scared. Cause I was just like, I don't know what's wrong. I didn't know it was just an Achilles. <laughs> like I'm thinking maybe like, could he have a heart attack or something? Like what the fuck? And then uh, when I seen them, because they were like helping him off, he was limping. And I remember he kept saying like, ah, like I'm gonna have to get an x-ray. Like I gotta get it looked at. Get it looked at. <laughs> he was walking, yeah, yeah, he was walking. And then it's funny about the doctor. The doctor, it was one of your friends, right? Shorts. No, uh, the actual doctor you went, remember we went to a hospital and got it looked at? I went with you. Oh. Wolf, yeah, it was at the friend. Cook County Hospital. Yeah, we but went to Loyola went, together. And I went Loyola. with him. Yeah, Harry I went with him with the whole me. time. And I watched all of the the stuff. It reminded me of Hoop Dreams. Remember when he was walking through and then he they were oh, showing they him the X-ray. And I was just like, so what'd you do? You just rehabbed it? Or mm -hmm. you got the surgery? No, I rehabbed it. Oh, didn't get it. surgery. Yeah, I was off it for one year. That's what, and I remember when the doctor was telling him like, yeah, like they can do this. And then he was like, no, nah, I don't want to do surgery. <laughs> Cause I had surgery before you guys were born right after I got married, I to, uh, tore my ACL playing racquetball. Yep. That's what I, I, told, I remember when you told, when you was explaining it to me, you yeah. was like, yeah, I, I messed my knee he up. he got the scar. Yeah, he mm -hmm. showed me the scar, but he was saying I messed my knee up way back and then I don't know, for some reason when he said that, it never really dawned Registry. on me like he tore his ACL. Yeah. I go tear my, which knee you tear? The left. Damn, crazy. It was, it was the same goddamn knee. Playing racquetball. When I was playing racquetball a lot. I remember coming back, getting ready to get set up. Knee gave out. Yeah, It's like somebody oh, shoot yeah. you. They just, most Nothing of your, happened. no, like, you didn't like most of your ACLs, it's no one, it's a non-contact uh, injury. Crazy. I didn't yeah. know we both, I didn't know we was uh, yeah, left knee too. Le left knee, but technology has advanced so far since then. They did surgery on my knee. They re they repaired it, it was never the same. Got me. This was back uh, early 80s. Damn. And I had to be off my knee for six weeks. Oh, wait, six yeah. weeks did nothing. Mm -hmm. Where now, Oh, yeah, Remember we when you tore yours, you was rehabbing before they even did surgery. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that's with technology yeah, now. Yeah, yeah totally, huge, uh, huge to, huge totally, totally different. Yeah. Best part about being a granddad? Watching them grow up. But the most important thing about being a granddad, if they come over, you know they going back home. <laughs> <laughs> you you back know home. they going back home. Yeah. Uh, just the experience, I want them to have uh, experiences that you guys had. I want them to be able to sit down one day and say, yeah, this is what mom and dad did for us. Mm -hmm. uh, more importantly, that they grew up, be good citizens, yeah. no trouble. And so far <laughs> no we've, had, we've had no trouble. And that's, uh, that's a good thing. Micah, who is 16, Ari's oldest son, eh, he, he blows his temper sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but like me. He, he, calms, he calms down and then realize he made, uh, he made, a, he made a mistake and, mm -hmm. and he'll, he'll, try to, he'll try to correct it. But just to be able to watch him grow uh, is the most important thing. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping one day that they become athletically inclined to, to do do sports because I think sports is great for every child. Yeah, helps keeps them out of trouble. Yeah, for one thing. Uh, two helps uh, the body develop. It's that discipline thing. Yes, yeah, it's not only discipline, but then for the mind too. Uh, they're able to think, coordinate things uh, out of nothing. Say, okay, how can I best advance to do this? And you learn how to do things as a girl. I think sports teaches that well. I'm able to. Um, do things in a group uh, setting. I can, I can uh, deal with a lot of different personalities. I can sort of, even if I say I don't want to be here, I can tolerate it because I play sports. Mm -hmm. I, I did. I, I, it's crazy. And still, but the the trick with that is like anybody can do that. Just show up. But it's like you do it at a high level. Yeah. That's where like the difference between like showing up and actually being disciplined, like you doing it 
at a high level, even with all the distractions around and kind of really people knocking you off your square and at the same time you still focus. It's cool that that, that that's there's a direct parallel with that. I don't think, uh, I don't even think parents realize it as they sign their kids up for it. I think most times it's like <laughs> a genuine just, you, you know, really gotta go I gotta sign it. these kids up because they need something yeah. to do. But it's like, you don't realize how much sports is shaping your kid especially once they like buy in and they like oh, it. Yeah. Like once they love it and it's like that's their sport that they're doing or that's their uh, outlet. Yeah, whatever their outlet is, if it's they're picking a, a, a instrument to play, uh, spoken word, cheerleading, whatever they find in their heart that this is fun and I can get up and make sure I'm there on time on my own, um, you start to see some amazing qualities, I think. Oh yeah. Blossom now, out. Now you're starting to mold yourself into uh, becoming young adults. Mm -hmm. uh, you, not only do you uh, put yourself in a position where you want to play the sport, but then while I was coaching you guys in the different sports, other than Ari and football, I used to say, it's basically uh, me as a coach, I'm here babysitting. <laughs> what do you mean? Because a lot of the parents would would drop their kids off and leave. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and I'm like, you're not really I there for that. the development at all. I would ask some of the parents, I say, why don't you guys uh, come help? Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not good at that. You don't have to be good at it. Speed. Just show them that you care, and that helps with their development. Just like with Kasani, I, I knew zero about soccer. Yeah, me too. I don't know. And Kasani, Started to play it well. Uh, 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 your mom signed me up to be a coach. Hell, you signed me up to be a coach for it. I <laughs> never played soccer a day in my life. She signed, you. she signed me up to be a coach. I didn't know Yo, that. Yo, this whole time I thought dog wanted, wanted to, to do, do it. it. No, <laughs> discipline. She's, she signed me up. But. You did the base, but you you signed yourself up for the baseball thing, though. Oh, the baseball, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you played all of you like guys. That. Yeah, yeah all of you guys played baseball. Who? Wayne played all the way up to Mustang League. You well, I wouldn't let you play because we saw that all of y'all ain't said, everybody. Well, I ain't everybody, let this, man. he's not gonna let you let you play because you might get hurt. He didn't. <laughs> nah, but I remember yeah, like football. I wouldn't let you long, play. No, how long? Uh, I played to like second grade or third grade. Yeah, but I remember the last season. I remember vividly like he didn't want to be a part of it anymore. Why? Cause he didn't, he, I forgot. He was just like, they weren't, it was like, remember you, you didn't like how it was set up. You you didn't like, he didn't like T-ball. This was at St. Giles? Oh, oh T-ball, no, no, yeah, he probably didn't like T-ball. You never, you never was. Cause I don't think Kasani like, played T-ball. Oh, he Kasani did. You didn't it. allow him to do it. No, they did it. I mean, not him. Uh, Kasani was gonna play the. Uh, they did, no, he played it for a couple of weeks and I remember he didn't like it and he was like, no, you're done. Especially after they told him like Kasani should not actually play. Like they were like, he's actually good. Oh yeah. He was like, no. Nah, Kasani didn't want to play. As soon as he knew that he had to hit the ball off the tee. He was like, like I remember him going up there and trying to like take it down. Like I don't, like I don't. No, want he this. was he was super frustrated that they would make you. You know how they make you act like you throw the ball, like because they would still have a pitcher out there even though the ball's on the tee. Yeah, I hated that too. But the fact that I used to always hate it, but never said nothing because I'm like, this is how they play. Kasani, <laughs> he was like, fuck that, I hate that. He was like, I hey, absolutely fake hate pitches? it. Yeah, Yo, it was oh, the dumbest man. thing. Never mind. Don't and then you swing uh, at the with the ball off. <laughs> That's why. He yeah, saved you. Yeah, okay, he saved yeah, he but saved then too, no, I saw a lot of parents and they were screaming and yelling at the kids and cursing, do this, do that. And I said, I don't want, I don't want to be a part of this. Because mm. you can play the sport without profanity. I remember uh, I once that you and you and Sonny, <laughs> I, don't know about that I was going to let you guys play Pop Warner football. Yeah. And the, and the coach was cursing, so we just we left. That that's, was it. That was that's it. Crazy. That was it with the football. I mean, he was. He said every word under the sun yeah. and didn't hold back. And we're talking about kids that's in fifth, sixth, seventh grade. Mm -hmm. I don't. I didn't want him to be an example. Yeah, I feel it. It's so crazy. I, said, no. I definitely didn't know for that. I thought it was just because we was just too rough and doing too much. I'm like, yeah, I thought, I, I literally thought he was like, bro, he, he gonna get hurt playing because he he overly excited to do this. All his little friends want to do it. Mm -mm. 
he don't know how to play, so he don't even know how to conform his body right. I figured that's why you didn't want me to play. Like he's gonna get hurt because he's gonna go out there. And oh just... yeah, no, nah, he definitely thought you was gonna get hurt. But yeah, it's... but I remember you telling me that when I was like, bro, I can catch that. You like, so you just gonna catch it? You just think you're not gonna get hit? I'm like, bro, I'm just just throw it in the end zone. I go get it. I'm like, I don't see what's so hard about the game. Coming, <laughs> you know, start coming to the game. Thing, but once yeah. I start coming to the game and hearing it, I'm like, oh, I'll get it. I'm yeah. like, but at least y'all got pads. I'm like, we don't even get no pads. Nigga, I get fouled all the time. But nice. we, we would have uh, go to Ari's football games yeah. and you could hear the pads. I remember. Oh, yeah. Popping remember, against no. each other. And Ari hit somebody coming through the line. I mean, he put him away. Mom almost cried. Oh, I remember I could hear it. And, and uh, I think it was you and I. Yeah, way to oh, go, yeah. Ari. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, uh, I remember going to a game and uh, Ari was frustrated. And mom was like, uh, I, I, she was trying to figure something out, but he was they was double teaming him. Uh, on the line, oh, yeah, yeah. they kept doing it to him, and mom was like that, like they was jumping him. Basically, she like it's two of them, like it's two of them on him. <laughs> and I remember you having to explain to us, like that means he's doing good. Yeah, yeah I didn't double double team my one guy. Coach had to tell me that he, he like, like he's oh, doing like, his good. job, like that. Usually there should be, you know, what I'm saying two people. It should take uh two different people so that we can hold the line. They like, he got a, they got to double team him to ensure he don't come off this this end so that they can get their pass off. But I'm like, that's that's a good pass rush. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know the strategy. <laughs> I didn't know there was a strategy involved. I thought we were just all trying to tackle whoever got the ball. No, it's, like, it's definitely yeah, a strategy. It's okay <laughs> it was cool because I, I actually learned some strategy uh, sitting there only because mom decided to point out that they was jumping her son. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what your mother would do for sure. if being double teamed. Oh, for sure. She didn't like when I got foul hard. Anytime I would stop where I like blood on the top of the head, anything like that, she would panic. She had to take a break or walk out or, yeah, it's, it's crazy. I uh, couldn't even explain to her what would happen on the play. Like it was one time I was reading the play. I had him in a little binder. I'm reading the play to her. I don't know why we were even doing it, but I was reading the play to her and I was like, this is where I come off and this he's just gonna hit me. I was like, he's just gonna hit me because that's his job. This is what he's gonna do. My job is to break off of that and hit somebody else. So it's kind of like a pinball thing. I'm like, but the momentum is there. Like even if I'm halfway through it, I just get knocked out. It'll still, I make the play. I'm like, this is great, right? And she was just like, oh, 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 so you have to oh, get oh. hit? She was like, no, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, well, I got a game tomorrow. I don't want to, I don't want to yeah, do it. Yeah, she was like, I don't want to talk like about it. it. Did you, your finger popped out? She'd oh, be yeah. like, your, your finger? Like, yeah. Ari used to talk about dislocations like they was easy. Like, yeah, you just pop it back in or you got to pull it out. Yeah, put you it pull back it in. Out. Yeah, you got to pull it out and then it slide back in. Paco was good with that stuff too. I remember when I dislocated my finger. He doesn't panic. Paco's, well, he's Paco's actually before. good yeah, at he's seen he's it. Good, but it's, it's crazy that he doesn't panic. Because he's seen it. Whether you seen it or not, bro, I've seen uh, plenty of gashes from us just going right, outside. But do you go, up. ooh! Like, no, you but I still that. be like, mm, like, yeah. Right, but you I can see the white there. meat. Like, I'll be like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> like mm, yeah, I can see. Uh, so I can see some that stuff. That is panic because that means you just spewing out stuff at the person who I'll hurt. Just be you. Like, be like, yeah, oh, I'll be, God. but I'll stop for a second to observe. Like, ooh, that's a like you hurt yourself. Like you hurt yourself mm, yeah. there. Like Parker's <laughs> very like he'll see the white meat and be like, we need to close it. Yeah, we yeah. need it. Like he's already proactive with all that. Even you remember the time I choked? What was we eating? And I choked, and Paca had to do the Heimlich, and I was trying to figure out. I'm fish. like, "What? Yeah, bone. Yeah, bones in the fish." And I'm choking. I'm. I, I'll just knew I'm finna die. I just know I'm finna die. I couldn't get no see the light because I couldn't say yeah. that I needed help. And I don't know why Paca turned around and looked, but he it just immediately, as soon as he saw, it was like he knew. Like, yeah, he's choking. He can't. He can't breathe. Like. Came around, did the Heimlich, and I remember throwing up, and I remember him clean. I remember him just going to clean it up. He didn't really say much, and I remember asking when I caught my breath, "How'd you know how to do that?" Like, School, Boy Scouts, <laughs> Boy Scouts. Scout. That's what he said. Yeah. Boy, Boy Scouts. Scouts. The man oh, did man. Boy Scouts, man. The man had survival tactics. He had survival tactics, and I did not yeah. have so. The man Thank saved you. my life two, three times, man. We ain't gonna talk about it. The talk- <laughs> <laughs> man saved my life a couple of times, but it's cool, man. You did your job. Uh, what's some times that you felt um, unsure about what to do as a parent? 
or you questioned your oh, yeah. abilities as a parent. Cause I ain't gonna yeah. lie, y'all, y'all, y'all kept it together on the forefront. You and mom made it look like right, y'all wouldn't have it. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm like, when did y'all close the door and be like, man, I don't know what the man. <laughs> I don't know what we gonna do, man. Like, when did y'all have to hold it? It's probably so many times <laughs> that we didn't want you guys to feel we were second guessing ourselves. Yeah. And that's the most important thing of a parent. You want your parent to be supportive of your kids, regardless. But there was was there was no like specific instance where it was too much, or, or where at least or you thought like, it was going to be like, or we asked, or we asked you something, and it's like you don't know what's going on yeah. on the homework. Like I don't know that. <laughs> That's my biggest thing. When Junie put stuff in front of my face and be like, Dad, you supposed to know this. And I'm like, damn, why well, it's been so long since I, I said, it's been so long. And I told you the you're trick. You're so young, you but. You gotta look up on the top of the page for the uh, the example, and then you gotta look at the very bottom where the answers are. <laughs> That's all you gotta know. That's all you gotta know. If not, you better pull she, out your phone and you better, yeah, you better start real yeah, quick. Google. But I, uh, I, I, I get reintroduced to stuff like that. Yeah. Right. Like, I get reminded when like, you know, but like uh, activities at school or stuff, not homework, but it's like stuff you gotta do for the school. Like say, if you gotta bring like school <laughs> supplies and stuff like that, I think of you two all the time. Like, <laughs> Specifically mom, but yeah, dad too. Mom was because, good with that. I'm used to mom yeah, doing that. Mom yeah. was very like, they need their notebooks, they need yeah, their pencils. You know, she was artistic and, exactly. and colored she, pencils. She taught art. Pens, yeah, so she used to be was, pissed when students weren't prepared. So. Yeah, uh, and it wasn't a matter that we had to go out and buy a lot of things because she had mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff, stuff at home. Right. Uh, one of the things, you know, she was uh, an artist and she was she was good. I have to admit good. that. Damn good. Uh, when when you you got something from her, it was a one, <laughs> perfecto. <laughs> if not, she wouldn't let it. She wouldn't let it out the door. That's how she felt about her art. Her father was an artist. I couldn't put three straight lines together to form. Uh, hey, I'm with yeah, you. He's all. It's me and you, dog. It's me and you. I knew. I could never, never draw. So you got no frustrating moments. There was not one time where you was just flustered. <laughs> I gotta, yeah, I gotta know. He bad at the man for playing it cool. Man. Yeah, I gotta know. Like there was not one time you yeah, were flustered. I, yeah, like, like a fluster, I like, can't deal like, with. Like, this. I got four boys and I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, or yeah, like, like I whatever. brought them here and I really don't know what I'm doing. Probably, if I was, you know, had some type of frustration, I wouldn't let it show. But when Shit. did you have it? I'm trying. I'm trying to think of some of the. Well, if I would come home and you guys would somebody was missing, and you were supposed to be home, there you go. Mm. I would be very upset. Okay. Because right. I would call and yeah, I'm at home, and then I rush right home. I, most of the time, I was taking the train because mom was driving mm -hmm. uh, the vehicle. Wouldn't be there. Oh, dad, I was just around the corner. I was down the street playing. Lo and behold, you're not down the street playing. <laughs> you're the, two miles away playing basketball in, in Chicago. Yeah. And we're like, you know, anything can happen. And I would be upset knowing that I didn't know where you were. Mm. If I would have got a phone call, what do I tell your mom? Well, he told me he was there. And uh, <laughs> after... Uh, after you guys become adults, then mom and I hear the stories. Oh yeah, you you call dad as soon as as soon as you call. We I be I go down uh, <laughs> to Chicago Avenue in Austin. I be playing basketball. Yeah. We be playing for money. And I mean, yeah. your mother look at me like you knew that. No, I didn't know. <laughs> I, I was, might go get blamed for something. I didn't know. I thought they were at home. My move used to be like. Cause we was we were we were pretty good though at the check ins at least me and you were that's what we didn't like getting in trouble like Kasani was very Kasani you didn't have to worry about much though Kasani's thing was going he would be somewhere he ain't supposed to be it's no he yeah, wouldn't be far once, it's not letting him out it's once he out <laughs> <laughs> Kasani it, uh, you'll find Kasani in somebody's basement uh 
a range in their basement so that they could like rollerblade through it like we did in our basement. It'd be like, bro, what? Like you got in trouble doing what? You snuck in your, our neighbor's house and did what? Like, what are you doing? You remember the time? Oh, y'all remember this with uh, Wesley. <laughs> Wesley didn't want uh, our next door neighbor. Wesley didn't want to ring the doorbell. He locked himself out. He didn't want to ring the doorbell again. And uh, cause Arthur would have had to come down to open the door. Uh, or Arthur would have had to throw a key out or something like that. I can't remember how we would have had to bother Arthur. Uh, they had an open window and Kasani climbed through Climbed through it. I, I think I believe I, I, I think I, I helped climbed him. Up on there, right? I helped him. I helped him. He was trying to do it on his own. He had set some stuff up and he fell. He was, uh, but he was basically panicking, like Lou's about to come home. Like, it's, you trying know what I'm saying? It's now or never. Head. Yeah, it's now or never. We're going for it. <laughs> <laughs> he did all of it. And I forgot when he got in, he, he did everything right. There was like this black thing that was on the side of the house. I can't remember what it was or what it did. It was like, it, it wasn't a button. It was like a plastic piece, but it, it did something for the house. Oh, for no, the no, no, water no, no. meter. Yeah, it was the cover. Remember, they had like water a water heater co cover. cover yeah, on there. yeah. Boy, Kasani put his foot on there and broke it. So that was I our one. That, that was the one piece of evidence. <laughs> <laughs> and he got in the he got in the window and immediately fell on something and broke that too. <laughs> Got the door open. We tried to like put the whatever it was back together. And I just remember getting our ass beat because it was just like, because I remember him end up coming and like, he looked at it and was like, Kasani can't get through that window, Iman. Like he looking at me like, bro, you're lying. Like mom was like, wait till your dad get home. And we had to sit there and get a get a whoop. I believe you wanted, you low key wanted to uh, give Wesley a whooping. Oh. Uh, Wesley was sitting there, <laughs> but we ended up getting a whooping in front of uh, in front of Wesley and Kelly, bro, for Kasani. And the reason I didn't know what happened after is because right after I helped Kasani, I went to go hoop. So when I came back home, Kasani oh, had yeah, already yeah. told a bad story. I came, tried to lie, got cleaned up. But it's crazy. I'm, I'm thinking about it because I'm like, bro. So half the half the whoopings we got was literally because you like now if something happened to you, mm -hmm. that's on me. That's crazy. All right, that's really. <laughs> I'm not thinking your punishment I'm a bad kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm thinking I'm a bad kid. Oh, I'm you just kid. making him look bad. <laughs> this was about him. Yeah, yeah uh, but you, this is a few things that. Oh no, we you crossed guys, the line for sure. Uh, looked bad. What? what else? Now he got one. Yeah, 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 come on. Oh, we was it bad. was hot one summer, and somebody put their tongue in the refrigerator in the freezer, and it got caught. No, was it you? Me. No, you split I, your tongue in half before too. But that one, not like that. It was oh, yeah, way no, more violent. Tongue on the freezer. Probably was Kasani though. That sounds like an Ari Ice, Kasani thing. You know, Wayne decided to put a popcorn kernel in oh, his yeah. ear. And it started to grow, to <laughs> pop basically. So I had to take him. He said his ear was bothering him. I couldn't see. I knew I was able to see that there was something in his ear, but I couldn't determine what it was. Took him to the emergency room. <laughs> they pulled it out. Popcorn kernel, ready pop to pop. That's crazy. That's disgusting. Oh, uh, bro, man, you got uh, what you got in there, man? How you popping popcorn? In there, oh, another though? one that I was upset about. Remember, we were getting ready for, I want to say, an AAU game. Mm. Ari, you were giving Iman oh, a haircut yeah, and was oh, yeah, us using a razor, and Iman moved and you cut him. Mm -hmm. Now, I was upset about that, but I don't. Uh, it wasn't too bad. No, it was. Nancy, no, it was. It was, it was, it was, it was bad. Just, it, was, it was a lot it of blood. Bad. So he it didn't need stitches. It didn't need stitches, stitches, and we didn't. We weren't panicking as hard as mom was panicking. But it mom. was in we a. Knew. It was just in a bad area. Like it was like. Yeah, you took that like right here. You took that. Yeah, it's cool though. We good. <laughs> I yeah. still let you cut my hair. It's cool. It, it was a number of those things. I was upset at the moment, but I didn't hold it against you the next day. Oh yeah, you held it against me when it happened. Oh, you like, <laughs> oh no, yeah. yeah. What are you using like, use a razor for? He wanted, he wanted to be clean. He, <laughs> he had somewhere to be. Too. Nice clean haircut. No, wasn't that like USA Select or something? I remember it was. It was important. It was for, it was it was for a basketball yeah, game or something. It was yeah. important. Anytime we had to do, uh, 
what you call it, when you did the razor though, it was it would get us right. Cause remember you did you didn't have a uh, mm. that that T outlining thing that you I, kept no, trying no, no. to. No, the kept, razor the when I had that was, was better a, with actual that. no that's when I had equipment that's when I had the actual. But I'm talking razor. about your your T outliner sometimes like you would be like saying that the oh sharpness. sometimes they break. Yeah, but I think it wasn't this was sharp enough. You was for, learning. You yeah. were still learning how to do the like get it like precise. So, but you were saying like when you was going to Moz or Mod, 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 yeah, you was going to Mod and Mod and them was doing the uh, the razors, mm -hmm. and then you start doing the razor, and it was actually it was easier for you to like. That's because they were the using. That's what I said. Stuff. They were using the straight razors. Like I was just going and buying like the, you know, the actual razors from See, the store. Like we used to have to do. Well, yeah. you don't. If you don't have money, yeah, you gotta you gotta learn. <laughs> we didn't have money to spend. We didn't. We didn't have twenty dollars for every uh, haircut. Oh, bro. Uh, a big theme on our show is uh, mental health. Mm -hmm. When you think of mental health for black men, you talk of therapy. What are your thoughts on it? Depression. You think black so, men? Oh yeah, yeah. We we have feelings. We make mistakes, but we don't know how to correct the mistakes. We try to live with them, and I heard someone say, "It's just normal. We try to figure it out or let it pass by." Straight up. And it never passed by. It's always with you. You may come out of the uh, the depression, but it's gonna come right back until you get some therapy. Do you do therapy? I've never done th done therapy. No, I never try to let myself get into a depression. Well, you know, I've been depressed when I was working uh, out there on my own. <laughs> yeah, I was depressed <laughs> yeah. when I was out there. You know, all the rail service. No, not the rail service, uh, the insurance business. Oh. You know, it took oh, time for it to grow. Yeah. And it wasn't growing fast enough. I'm like, well, I don't have the money to pay these people. I don't have the money to pay these people. And then some days, checks would just come in. I'm like, it's going to happen. It's going to happen again. Mm. But you try to make the corrections. Uh, you grow from those mistakes. What'd you do personally? Like, yeah. how'd you catch yourself and kind of reverse the damage? It's not a matter of catching yourself reversing the damage. It's a matter of putting yourself in the position that it doesn't happen again. That's the key. Because once it starts, once you go into that depressed stage, it's difficult to come to get out of it. I ain't gonna lie, I thought it, depression was fake. But the longest I was like, dog, that's the biggest excuse I've ever heard. I'm like, I don't know why people like lean on it so hard. And um, at one point during, um, oh, when Ari had to cut my high top, that's where the high top came from. I was literally at yeah, that wall that. where I'm like, I, it, this leg, it, it's not getting, like, I'm, I can't oh, do yeah. nothing. I'm like, Ari like, at this point, he like, dude, can you get up? change, cut your hair, do, let's do, come on, let's cut your hair, let's do something different. Like, like I was just moping. Like after a while, I was just staring at walls. <laughs> I'm like, what am, yeah. I, what am I doing? I'm like, I can't, I'm like, I go to work out and I'm like, it's not enough. Like it's only so much I can do. And everybody keep telling me, you need to rest, you need to rest, you need to rest. I'm like, bro, I've been going to sleep every day for two months. I'm like, I'm, I can't do nothing. I can't run, I can't jump, I can't push somebody, I can't do nothing. I'm like, if I walk down the stairs and mess up, I'm down, I'm done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I was just in that, and I was like, bro, this is the first time I could acknowledge it. I was like, man, that's, depression's real. Like, this is, I really can't help myself and I can't climb out of this. And it's crazy, I got that haircut and I didn't feel depressed no more. Like everybody was going crazy. I'm like, I don't know why they like the haircut so bad. They thought saying Big Daddy Kane. I was like, well, I wasn't thinking that, but. Right, <laughs> you'll take it. Right, I'll take it for sure. Uh, yeah, looking back on it, I, I that was my first dose of that. And um, I'd say when I finally did go to therapy, one of the first things that um, we ended up talking about was me tearing my ACL. That was one of the first things that actually bothered me. I can't, I don't have many memories of stuff like bothering me 
or like uh, bother you, like break you down. Yeah, like that'll send me into a depression. Like that was the first thing that I ever did. It was the first major bump in the road for me that was just like, sit down. I was like, whoa. Yeah, because you never had an injury of that magnitude. At all. And you're so young, it's like, my life is just getting started. I'm now I have some earning power and it may come to an end. Mm -hmm. At a young age, what am I going to do now? You mm -hmm. still had that education behind Georgia Tech. You can always do that, but you weren't thinking about that. All yeah. you were thinking about <laughs> was, when am I going to come back and play? Real tough. How fast can I do it? And that's what you were looking at, how fast that you could come back where other players had the same injury but took their time coming back. Do you ever look back and say uh, you wish mental health, there was more of a push and uh, just more support around it for black men back when you were growing up? Oh, yeah. Do you feel like if it was introduced earlier, you would have did it? Would have would have uh, taken care of it because we were young, fatherless, and I wasn't the only one. There was a lot of us growing up with uh, with a mental health depressed issue, and what kept us together was we were around each other. We never discussed what the issues were. But what was more important is we had a bond, a friendship. That's what kept us to, kept us together. It kept us out of trouble because once you get into that depressed stage, you can do just about anything. Just about. Anything. I talk about that with my therapist. Like just what he said. It's funny you said that. The uh, the fact that we kind of and he was telling me he was like no like because I would tell him like man I don't really need. He was like you need more like fellowship. You need more basically he's saying like more friends. Like you need more people to confide to. You need people to trust. And I'm just like. Oh, like I don't Cause you want. think you think you got to talk to him, and he was just yeah, and not even just that, but it's like I don't really like you know, like I don't really like you know, just sharing myself with anybody. You know what I mean? Or being like hella open with anybody. It takes a while for me to get comfortable with you know giving me giving somebody else personal information, especially right. somebody new who I don't usually talk to. But he was like, uh, uh, "Do you do it in your family?" He was like, "With your cousins," and I'm like, "Yeah, all the time." He was like, "See." And he was like, as black people, we kind of fool ourselves with that. He was like, you think just because they're your cousins. He was like, they probably are genuine and they do love you. You are supposed to take their support and have respect for what they're telling you. But he was like, they still are conditioned already to, you know, accept what you're doing or they already mm -hmm. are tied into, you know, however you came up. So it's easy for you to be like, you know, take heed of what they're saying versus somebody who might have a right answer for you. But you can't relate, whatever the wall is, you can't get through, it's not gonna resonate with you, so. Yeah, but. That's important. It, it is important, but they may be more screwed up than you are and just afraid to that come true. out and say, and they're probably deep down inside, they're saying, you know what, I feel what you're going through, yeah. but afraid to admit mm -hmm. it. I'm, yeah. um, I think I've been more, um, I find therapy in stuff, but I don't actually, like you said, I don't think I talk about a lot of stuff. I won't voice it, but I know, I'll know when I need to go lay, lay on mom's lap and just chill and watch an old show. Like that's therapy for me. Mm -hmm. It's nostalgic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I know when I need to call you and we just need to talk basketball. Like let's just talk basketball for an hour 30 two hours or or I'll call you the times that I'll just randomly make some food. It'll be like, maybe my mind's a million places. And I'm just like, you know what? I want to make my own food. I want to make it how he made this. And I'll oh, call yeah. ask him for ingredients. And, but or, just, yeah, what I'm supposed, just, just what, what I'm supposed, supposed to be doing. Supposed to be doing yeah, like, how if do you we marinating it? it, are we doing this? Like, he'd be like, well, I like to do this, or you could do this, or you could save this for tomorrow. And when you warm it up tomorrow, you redo this or do that, like put this on it. and. Um, I find therapy in that. Like, I didn't realize when talking to my therapist, uh, he kind of uh, pointed it out to me. Part of my therapy is when he cuts my hair. You sit down with your barber, he's like a black man and his barber. It's an intimate therapeutic conversation. 
because they're actually a person that knows you. They're in routine with you. Mm -hmm. They're asking you what you're getting your hair cut for, which know, that means they know what you're going to, whatever the event is, and they're gonna talk to you. You can always ask them questions. They're nine times out of 10 gonna be older than you because they were cutting hair since you were a kid. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you ask them questions, they help you in life. I'm like, these are that's our therapy as a black man. Mm -hmm. It's just cool now that we're voicing it so much that I feel like more people are encouraged to go and say, you know, I may be dealing with a trauma or something right here, right now, and I wanna get on top of it so that I don't make a mistake. I think we're so used to, like you said, making the mistake mm -hmm. and just carrying it like, yep, I, that happened. Yeah, and not even I'm really man, knowing I'm a why man. it happened. Yeah. I'm a man, it happened, and I'm moving on. Yeah, you know, like when you don't know why, it's probably like it takes on that persona where you're like, you know, like I don't know what it is, but or you thinking like this is just how it goes. Like that's how yeah. I would think. Like sometimes stuff would get tough, and I'm just like, man, this just must be how it goes. Yeah, or this wife. just must be what everybody put up with, and it's like, no, this is. No, you're right, and everyone, some people put up with it, but a lot of people don't though. In today's day and age. Mm -hmm. We're not afraid to express our feelings like we were 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. Because as a black man, you weren't strong. If you that's did how, that. If you did that, that's how people looked at it. Ah, he's weak and probably a lot of other connotations out there. But now, d depression hits everyone. Yeah. And it's actually, you, they look at you stronger if you can oh, yeah. announce mm -hmm. it. And say, yeah, how many people would really come out and say that they're in a de depressed mood right now or going through depression? Yeah, there's a whole stigma behind it. Yeah, but you learn to work it out. You learn to talk to someone. Like I said, uh, people around you help substantiate some of the things that you go through. When you um when you talk about community bonding um and just being a part of something uh what's that like from having your own kids and giving them that example and, and seeing well, your grandkids but our kids mm -hmm. get those same uh, examples it's it's a, it's a great feeling uh feeling that's hard to describe you can sit there and then you you start to reminisce, <laughs> you know. Uh, what if the granddaughters become uh, world-class swimmers, <laughs> basketball players, and then you think to yourself, what's wrong with them becoming a, you know, a ballerina, yeah. a dancer? They don't have to be, be uh, what I want them to do, be athletes, but be what they want to be, yeah. but be good at what they want to be. You no, know, we gonna they, support what they want to do. Yeah, but the key, the most important thing is, are they willing to put the time in? That's the most important thing, putting in the time. Mm -hmm. Just be, can't become a dancer overnight. Years and years of work, <laughs> years and did. years of he practice. Did. <laughs> yeah, he kind of did. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. No, Before that we, might be years. That might be years of practice though. I, I, you know Crammed into what, like four months? You know what I'm saying? I used to know how to do the Soldier Boy, crank that. You know what I mean? Like, I got my. That didn't help you, man. You needed it to help you. <laughs> but, Dad, we're going to wrap it up before we let you go. We would like to ask all the guests on the show. It's my personal question that I wrote up myself, so I'm very proud of it. <laughs> what are you working on in your personal life right now? Like, what are you working on improving in your personal life? Staying healthy. Mm. Amen to that. that. That's one of the most important things. When you're young, you feel invincible. Nothing can go wrong. Mm. But as you get older, every damn thing starts to mm. break down. Yeah. You get sick and you're like, oh boy, I'm going through this. What's next? I'm going to die. <laughs> but that's the, that's the most important thing is, is trying to stay healthy. And, and giving out good advice. Man, I'll tell you what, I'm. that's my favorite part about you um, at this age. I feel that there has been plenty of times when we was younger that is like, we liked when you did it, like every once in a while you would give people jewels, but there's a lot of times that you would, you would be quiet. 
Like you wouldn't, mm. you wouldn't say anything. You wouldn't bother. You let everybody run their race. Everybody yeah, no do their thing. Yeah, no reaction. Stone cold face. I'm just here in support. I'm, you know, help guide y'all here and there. But when you gave advice, it usually was like really, really good advice. And as I've seen the years go on, it's like I've seen you open up to people that normally you don't give them jewels. Mm-hmm. It's like some of this stuff is like he only said that if he, if he knew you, knew you. Like he wouldn't even let y'all in on that. You're looking man. at whoever you're having a conversation with, like you getting good stuff. Real talk. <laughs> Real talk. Stuff. Listen up. Yeah. You don't do this all the time. You better sit down. Right. But uh, I think that like when people are allowed to see it from somebody that's been through, been through it, that can say that they got four kids under them that been through it to say they got grandkids, to say they've been there, to say they've started their own business. Like when I really think about it, there's no better person to get advice from. You know what I'm saying? When we when we look back, like I, I love getting it from a grown a grown man, so to speak. And as we go through the rest of the world, I think that's the, the biggest issue that I face with a lot of people that I will compare every man to my dad. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, and I, and I understand that, but that was the way you were brought up. That's your mentality. No, I'm saying it's 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 crazy to hear you say that because you were saying you grew up fatherless. Fa- fatherless, yeah. You see what I'm mean, saying? there was a father there. I had a father. I knew where my father was. But I'm saying you wasn't like he wasn't at your game. He games. wasn't there to support me. Oh, so he still gave you some guidance a little bit? No, no, no. 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 He gave, he gave <laughs> me, he gave me nothing. Ari had that little piece of day, like, oh, <laughs> a little, little, bit of hope, right. little bit of hope. He so did, he did right. Right. give you a little. Nah, nah. nah. It was, uh, it, it was, it was mom, my mom that gave us well, all both the, the guidance. Hats. Hey, yeah. I'll tell you, my grandma could tell a good story too. Yeah, she gave, she gave she, us. If she was guidance. here, she'd be running this show herself. Oh, bro. Yeah, we would be removed, and this would, this would be her seat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, we want to give a sincere thank you to our father for coming on the show, man. Uh, yeah, as always, thank you for rocking with us on Iman Amongst Men. Presented to you by Uninterrupted. Let's give it up one more time for my father, Ari's father. <laughs> Otis Shubba, one time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Yeah, uh, you, could be, you could be black today. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to rate five stars, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast. And to watch the full video episodes, you're going to head over to Uninterrupted's YouTube channel and click subscribe. We hope y'all enjoyed the show. And until next time, we are gone. Wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs>